Okay, I don't usually open up this box over here on the shelf of what the hell is that. But uh, let's look into some of these stories here and try to get some clarity to it and just, just some realism of what has been going on. I'm going to start with a hypothetical situation here. What if I was to tell you that this is a burial that was been found in a cave that was protected and apparently never disturbed from whenever it originally was put in there? You can see it's only lit by two flashlights that are laid on here, back casting the light a little bit, and it's hard to make it out so much. But there's some oddities with this. You can see that there's a ring of jaw bones around each one of them's neck. And that's quite an oddity. Now this is an actual site, and I probably ought to do a separate video, but I'm just giving you a hypothetical on this. Also, if you looked real close, you'd notice that all their arms are behind their back, especially this one here. You can see his spine passes over it and his arms are crossed behind him, crossed behind, crossed behind, crossed behind, crossed behind. That's not too outstanding, but it's just quite an oddity rather than their hands being crossed in front or anything like that. What if I told you all those little arrowheads you see up around their head were hand placed there, but apparently the person that placed them was hovering in some way because there are no signs of anybody walking up having placed them unless they were doing it when this place was ar dusted already swept out and then they swept out their remnants of what would have been them and then all this is the dust of time <laughs> yeah that could probably go what if I told you those arrowheads date to Lavalis type area and something around after the Aurignacian period and so on and appear to mimic ones that are found uh, associated with Cro-Magnon man Now that's probably believable. Everything's still okay, right? But there's that weirdity, those jaws, the arms behind their back. What if I was to tell you every one of these skeletons, including the woman, is well over six foot tall. In fact, the guy in the middle here is over seven foot tall. <laughs> well, you might think, oh, that's okay. Cro-Magnons, we know that they reached over seven foot tall. So this is the incredible Cro-Magnon find. Well, all that can be associated in things, and people may not like the jaw thing and this about it, or the arms behind their back, or the fact that the women are even tall, and this seems to be pushing some type of issue, surely, doesn't it? But what if I was to tell you that this was found in South America? And it dates to 22,000 to 26,000 B.C. on initial tests. See, somehow, that all went sour right there. Everything was going along just fine. And then there's one thing that tries to screw it all up. And I'll bet you the archaeologists would want, if they found that to that point, to just shut that door and walk away from it. Let's discuss some things that have been found that are something along this line, in fact, much, much, much older, showing you where people were in ancient times and where they're not necessarily so much anymore. Ancient anomalous human skeletons. Humanity could be much older than we think. There are many reported human skeletal finds which are in discordance with current evolutionary beliefs dating back to an anomalous ancient geological period in the distance past, way before it's accepted that human beings ever existed. We'll look into that dating and current dating and fit that into this story, but let's continue. One. 
intriguing report surfaced in an American journal called The Geologist, dated December of 1862. In Macaupin County, Illinois, the bones of a man were recently found on a coal bed capped with two feet of slate rock, 90 feet below the surface of the earth. The bones when found were covered with a crust or a coating of hard glossy-ish type matter as black as coal itself, like bitumen or something, but when scraped away left the bones white and natural. The coal in which the remains were found have been dated between 320 and 286 million years ago. Which, despite a lack of supporting evidence and little information on the discovery, is certainly worthy of inclusion into this list. Now here's just somebody's depiction. You can tell that's fake where they just set it in some darkish sand. That's not even a real skeleton and so on. But, well, they call it a representation image. The bones of a man were recently found on a coal-capped two feet slate rock 90 feet below the surface of the earth. Now, people at this time made responses to this, and they thought, well, that's a sign of the biblical flood and so on. You're not listening. This isn't 2000 B.C. something. 4,000. We're not even talking about the Younger Dryas or anything here at this point, people, at the end of the last ice age where a lot of that thing comes from and the ideals of it. We're talking way, way back. So that's the reason it's in the box over here. We're going to talk about a few things in the box here. How about the fox hall jaw? A better documented account of an anomalous find is a human jawbone discovered at Fox Hall, England in 1855, which was dug out of a quarry at a level of 16 feet under the ground level, dating the specimen at least two and a half million years old. Now, American physician Robert H. Collier described the foxhole jaw as the oldest relic of human existence. The problem with this particular fossil was its modern appearance. See, in a modern day, we know that they go back two and a half million years, but this isn't going to fit the mobile because... A more ape-like mandible would have been more acceptable despite its great antiquity, but many dissenters believe the authenticity of the bone probably because of the shape of the jaw was not even primitive, according to paleontologist Henry Fairfield Osborne. What does he mean by not primitive? Well, I think there's a hand-drawn picture of it here. There. What can be told about it is it has a rocker type jaw. And if you know anything about anthropology, it's the way the hinges are set up here. But also, he has a chin. What? I mean, I made that sound so important. What the hell has got to do? Well, Cro-Magnon Man is the first human to have a chin. In fact, what was recently, up until recently, called Cro-Magnon Man is now called Early European Modern Humans because they were able to get some DNA out of a 30,000 year old one. Yeah, like the cave art type stuff, and they say it's still extant today, still here. And genomes, haplogroups that come from uh, through off of it, but still here. Well, that's amazing just finding in itself, but then to find something that they would label as being Cro-Magnon type. Not just a Homo sapiens, which now, by the way, they found at Jibal Irud Cave, date back to 315,000 years. I want you to remember that date. I know it used to be 225 and then it was 165 or whatever in Ethiopia and so on. No, they found Homo sapiens, anatomically modern humans, but there's slight discrepancies where they don't want to say it's totally, totally human or whatever, not exactly like common. 
and the only modern human, the first modern human, because of things like a chin make it just slightly different. And so it's professed that if you have a chin that you have had Cro-Magron indigression at some point along your lineage or effectively you wouldn't have a chin. Other people try to say it's convergence where animals in different places develop the exact same traits. Well, it's also related to agriculture and farming which kind of sets it off at a weird dating because agriculture and farming, well let's see, whenever I started and younger and studying on all this that was the Sumerians, they invented the plow and all these things and then we come to find out, no, no, it goes way back and Catalhoyuk and all these other groups now we have found, well I've got another video about to come out where they found 23,000 year old farming and making bread and, and the grinders and so on to go along with it. I've done other videos that show that and there are grinders that have been found with Cro-Magnon men. Well, the earliest Cro-Magnon men we find has a non-prognastic jaw. Other than the fact that having the chin, his mouth doesn't protrude out like people that are more primitive. Prognathism is a more simian type trait so that you would figure as you go back it would fastly turned into something that had a prognostic jaw. The only problem with Cro-Magnon man itself, or one of the issues, is that he shows a lack. The, the, the best people say he has a lack of prognathism. And that also Neanderthal does too, compared to even some modern people on the planet who are still somewhat primitives. Well, let's go on from this here. Let's look at an, another one. We'll come back to this concept. Buenos Aires skull. A fully modern... Is that blocking? Oh, no, that's the top of that skull. A fully modern human skull was found in Buenos Aires, Argentina, in an early Pleistocene formation, revealing the presence of modern humans in South America between one and one and a half million years ago. But once more, the modern appearance of the skull doesn't seem to fit with the conventional thinking on human origins, so is discounted on these grounds alone. Here we see a clear example of dating by morphology and a distinct disregard of all other data. No matter how credible, the thinking is simple. If it looks modern, it must be modern, and no modern humans could possibly have existed that far back in time, so it must be ruled out and just tossed in that box over there. And no, 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 you can't talk about it. It's just going to be a false thing, and you don't want to talk about that. Instantly, if you try to pursue this, everybody's going to start ridiculing you. Now, that's what's amazing. Now, we understand this one, one and a half million years ago, well, human origins supposedly go back about two and a half million years, but we're supposed to have been some missing link at that point that somehow we're all related to that we can't find. You know, when you look at that evolutionary chart as it runs up, those aren't even related to each other, by the way. Yeah, in the middle of that doesn't relate to humans at all, and all of a sudden they got somebody walking up and doing things. The last three there are still existent on the planet. You can see it pretty much. And then all of a sudden they try to throw in this, it's a monkey man thing, and they haven't found that. No, no, Lucy Lucy has definitely been ruled out now, although people want to still hold on to that and all these ideas, this thing that came out of Darwinism. But also it still has biblical connotations and everything else. It's the reason people still claw at it, although it surely... Long, long ago, people realized that the science has bypassed the concept. But let's continue. Oh, by the way, this also could be a sign that there were other hominids. Now, hold on to your seat. There were actually in the Americas, for if we know that it went fully out of the ice age before to where that ice bridge in Alaska goes all the way across and it makes it fine and dandy. 
not at the younger driest age where they say that the Amerindians happened, but like now it's starting to melt away again and say, well, it had gotten before, over 40,000 years ago, melted all away. Could somebody have gone across there? Well, we know the animals did back and forth like crazy. We've got all the records of this, but then people, no, nah, they want to discount that out. Yet you have Australian aboriginals that could have only been on Australia because of some type of boating and everything way back then. They dated to at least 50,000 years ago. But that's got to be set over here on the side and not put into the mix. It's got to be separated totally rather than going, okay, well, there were some more advanced people at this time too whose DNA is still extant today of Cro-Magnon, man. Now, if these aborigines could, uh, 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 and there's, oh, man, there's a brick wall there. You're talking to a brick wall. There's no one there left. When you start making this connotation and subject, things go real bad. I've had excellent little conversations with people that are professors and so on before and literally had a book shut in my face before whenever they were real excited until all of a sudden the conversation drifts that way and then I got to go. I've made mentions of it before. Somebody that was going to devote me an hour checked out at about six minutes into the situation. Yeah, and, and it's not that they just, oh, I'm not going to listen to that nonsense. It's just like, ah, uh, and then they fidget and kind of balk on it. This is that skull, and no, it's not complete at all. But see, you could see, here's the thing. These people are so good at craniotomy and everything, they realize the size and the bulbous shape of this and how it's a, it's a modern head. It's Cro-Magnon type head on the top part of it. See like you could take a Cro-Magnon and you could like saw off the top of it and then put this on there and you go damn it almost exactly fits. It's just right over here. It's a hair thicker. It's a hair bigger. Hmm. You know the yeah so this modern skull is found in Buenos Aires but it's supposed to be a million and a half years old. Well this impro this approach to it all employs gosh illogical thinking if one considers that the skull was found in a pre ascendanian stratum, according to present geological calculations, dates back to one and a half million years, and therefore scientific data as well, the plethora of cases worldwide does not match the final analogy. And instead of pursuing the matter further until a satisfactory scientific conclusion can be arrived upon, the discovery is slipped unsurpassingly into an anonymity into a box and something like the Indiana Jones and they're just gonna like well what are you gonna do with it well they got top men working on it and at the end you find it in a box at the bottom of a museum or someplace that nobody ever looks back into in fact in the last three and a half years that I've been doing this channel alone there's at least ten instances where somebody looked in a box that they just had in a museum and found something like more to the Gilgamesh tale, like this, like that, and it's amazing what they've done. It's just right there. The things we found out about King Tut stuff, because it's all been locked up, and uh, uh, except for what they have on exhibit, so where they didn't even really looked at a lot of this stuff since it got put away. And they go to look at it, and now they realize, oh, a lot of this is from Akhenaten and the other ones. In fact, his chair had, doesn't have him on it, is it? The chair actually has the sun rays of the Aten and everything. This was not made done. Hold on. Why is there more than one chariot? Why does it not look like the one that they have on the wall? Hold on. Hey, here's some Shabti dolls with blue eyes. Hold on. Well, they did the DNA on the people now and hold on. They figured that one out, but we kind of knew that all along. Things that get kept from normal public knowledge. You'd almost think that something like this, because it's done in such a secretive way, not necessarily secretive, it's done in such a way that, you know, these archaeologists spend so much time, nth degree and everything else, whenever they come out with something, you'd think it'd be put out. Well, Nat National Geographic doesn't really do that anymore, and the History Channel doesn't really teach history anymore. Check it out, it's all freaked out. It's kind of weird. It's like MTV when I was a kid and they quit playing music videos and you're like, what? So they made another channel and then screwed it up too. It, it, it never ends though. 
History Channel, huh? How about the cliché skeleton? In a quarry in the Avenue of Cliché Paris. I believe that's the way it's pronounced. It looks like Clichy, but wouldn't that be cliché? Huh? Well, it should be an E with a little... No. Parts of a human skull were discovered along with a femur, the tibia, and some foot bones by Eugene Bertrand in 1868. The layer in which the cliché skeleton was found was dug out would make the fossil approximately 330,000 years old. Now, hey, hold on a second. If you were to do it right now today, it may be considered... Imagine they had 325,000 years at Ibel Jerud, and then you found, well, across the Gibraltar and right up over there, we have uh, France. And, uh, hey, here's 330, so, yeah, it's right within the ballpark. But, but no, fists start shoved. No, that, that. It wasn't until Neanderthals came accepted as the Pleistocene ancestors of modern humans that French anthropologists were forced to drop the cliché skeleton from the human evolutionary line, as a modern type of human could not predate their allegedly older Neanderthal relatives. Now imagine that at this time we had that 135,000 thing that we're talking about, and they said Neanderthals predated that, so we somehow came out of Neanderthals. Does anybody remember that? That they were, well, and that, and because Neanderthals looked a little more squat, and they used to draw them a whole lot different, and so on. Now we've got modern depictions. He looked like Chuck Norris and stuff, and he's just bigger and thicker. Hell, he had a bigger cranial capacity, and so on. We're fixing to look at that. But, huh? But if we're supposed to come from them, and they only date back a little over 150,000 years, and we found Homo sapiens at 325,000 years, verified at Jebel Arud. That somewhat validates this thing that's thrown in the box somewhere, doesn't it? A little bit. Gives a chance that you should open up that damn box again. They don't want to open up the box. In fact, I wonder if they could even find the box anymore. Things like this have a mysterious way of just... Where'd that go? So you can't have something that's older than Neanderthal. Well, Neanderthals are conveniently understood to have existed from 30 to 150,000 years ago. And the cliché skeleton, which dated over 300,000 years ago, was simply not acceptable and despite the evidence supporting its authenticity. Well, here's a weird question. The out of Africa theory has already been thrown all through a loop and chunked down and it got very little left of it that could have any basis in fact. In fact, we just discussed the fact that there could have been a large portion of this in Northern America, or the Americas. But where does Neanderthal come from? See, there's a lot of people that look at the different forms of Homo erectus and they say, well, there was some large difference between each one of those, but we can't get any DNA out of them. And so they said there's huge variation of difference. In fact, it looks like before that time, they were already radically different in each little area. And then from that, maybe it comes out to be more, but it doesn't work out well, and they always tell you Homo erectus has died off. Now they have a modern thing that says it's just from laziness and lack of being able to adapt and things, and poof, there they went. So Neanderthal came out of some crossbreeding that was coming from something, because we've got a little touch of Neanderthal in us, but so much more different. We find Denisovans now. Isn't it amazing they want to jump on Denisovans? And first of all, after looking at a couple of finger bones, they go, okay, he was giant. Well, the people that hold their DNA now don't show any giantism or whatever, but he was a giant. What else? Well, if they find any cool stuff, which they already found that bracelet, right? That jaded bracelet, it dates way back before anything like that could have been made. Well polished and everything, holes drilled in it. They say, oh, the Denisovans. Now you see what this does is it gives them an easy way out. 
they're able to take somebody that doesn't exist anymore, like Neanderthals or something, and throw it out there and go, well, if there's anything needed in that, it came from this lost civilization, and poof, and there goes your thing. That's what's probably coming out of this. And thoughts. But you look at the cranial capacity of Neanderthal, and I, I, I believe that they probably took these two pictures and posted them on there. Neanderthal isn't that much bigger than Cro-Magnon's skull, but Cro-Magnon's a little bigger than ours is still today. But the brain capacity of these two creatures. Now you see the jaw of Neanderthal here. It shows what might be slight prognathism and what might be the starting of a chin but not. <coughs> And this is where they just try to put them in a line and do things. And Neanderthal doesn't really have anything to do with this. But surely we realize the hybridization slightness, even that happened to that, caused a change. Well, they thought, okay, with well, that and Homo sapiens made Cro-Magnon. No, it doesn't look like that. Cro-Magnon dates from another time. How did that happen? But then how did, how did Neanderthal happen in the first place? And a lot of people just brush past that. They, re they really try to. But interactions with these larnial, larger cranial capacity people with hominid types that were pressed to the end of the, of the earth seem to have brought about modern people. Well, that's a touchy subject. Let's just move on. The Ipswich skeleton. That's My dad went to Ipswich one time from a banker dude doing this whole thing and he got to play golf at a place there that has to do with witches and this tree and stuff so if you're from around there you probably know what the hell I'm talking about in 1911 another anatomical modern human skeleton was discovered beneath a layer of glacier boulder clay near the town of Ipswich in England by J. Reed Moir found at the depth of 44 and a half feet or 1.37 meters between a layer of clay and glacial sands the skeleton could be as much as 400,000 years old. And now, now, now see, now that, whenever they found that, they're like, gonna know hell, right? But in a modern day where they already found that 325, maybe that 330 we just talked about, 400 isn't too far pushing it. We just pushed 100,000 years on Homo sapiens with that one find. Jibal Irud Cave, got a video about it too actually and talk about it more in a couple of other ones where it comes up like this naturally the modern appearance of the skeleton was the cause of strong opposition but if the find had to be neanderthal like then there would have been no questions raised over its position in the glacial sediments see that's what's weird is because neanderthal no longer really exists if they found something and they could accredit to Neanderthal, they'll go ahead and do it. That's what I fear they're going to do with the Denisovan type things, is be like, well, we can't find a Denisovan, rather than trying to say it's possible that they go back much longer. For people back in this time right now, coming all the way through until real modern times, I'm talking about even when I went to school, if you were to try to talk about things like this, they would tell you, oh, mumble, 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 walk away. In fact, having the 325 or 315 uh, million thousand, sorry, 315,000 year old find you still probably cannot bring these up to anybody except for the most open of people. And, boy, it's got to be somebody who's real strong in their tenure if he's even going to discuss it with you. It's gotten to that point. Yeah. In a modern PC world, oh, and the founders of humanity, and who would, oh, and it's, it's really, you can see it, you can feel it, definitely. As Scottish anatomist and anthropologist Sir Arthur Keith explained, under the presumption that modern type of man is also modern in origins only, a degree of high antiquity is denied to such specimens. Plural. That's more right there. The deposits in which Ipswich skeleton was excavated from were recorded by the British Geological Survey as an intact layer of glacial boulder clay which had been laid down between the onset of the Anglian glaciation 
and the Hoxnian glaciations. Previous glaciations, a period that stretched between 330 and 400,000 years ago. Well, will that make sense? Yeah. Some authorities have been put to the beginning of the Mendel glaciation period, which is the equivalent to that of the Anglian, at around 600,000 years ago. Yeah, the glaciation can have this wide range on it, but then this person, they peg it down, they even give a lesser, well, no, not, no, which could potentially allow the Ipswich skeleton to be date back as far as 600,000 years. So you could say that, you know, but always in these finds, if it's in the presence of what's normal, what's funny is they want to take the earliest possible and stretch it to there. And when you hear of it and they give you this brand of 10,000 years, they go for that. If it's 30 from 30 to 40, they go 30. If it's 30,000 years, 30. Never go 35. Never go 35. Do I hear 36? Do I? Sometimes now they've pegged them down to exact dates and you'll hear them come out of my mouth on a lot of people. But a lot of people, if they give a wide date, will go for the earlier one. I used to do the same thing and say at least as much as I talked before about how I just don't describe things as being first ever or anything but old is found too but let's continue the Castanadello bones situated in the southern slopes of the Alps at Castanadello six miles southeast of Brescia lays a low hill called Colle di Vento where millions of years ago during the Pleistocene period Layers of mollusks and coral were deposited by a warm sea washing in, and now it's pushed up on the land, and you can see it, and people are like, how's there shells over here? That man, there's shells in the top of Everest, because anciently long ago, and so on. But in 1860, Professor Giuseppe Regazzoni traveled to Castandolo to gather fossil shells in the Pleistocene strata exposed in a pit at the base of the Colle di Vento, reporting on his finds, where Regazzoni wrote, Searching along the bank of coral for shells, there came into my hand a top portion of a cranium completely filled with pieces of coral cemented in it with blue-green clay, characteristics of that formation. Astonished, I continued to search, and in addition to the top portion of the cranium, I found other bones of the thorax and limbs, which quite apparently belonged to an individual of the human species. So here's a good portion of, I guess, the, the head or the skull. Once more, negative reactions ensued by both geologists and scientists who were unwilling to accept the Pleistocene age, of course, offered by Ragazzoni for the skeletal remains. It was explained away by an insistence that the bones, due to their clearly modern, more characteristics, would have been come from a recent burial and somehow other found themselves along the Pleistocene strata, like somebody snuck in and buried it. Well, they checked it, and there's no sign of anybody ever digging down or whatever like that, so... Well, well, they came in from the side. Oh, somebody's trying to trick you from, what the hell? Is that what you're going to go with? If in doubt, simply explain it away with logical thinking, even if you ignore the facts with plain sight and filter out the parts which don't fit. Regazzoni was understandably not pleased with the reception he received when the disregarded giving to his legitimate discovery of an anatomically ancient human skeleton. Uh, he kept his eye on the site where he had found the relics once. Uh, the land was sold to Carlo Gugmani in 1875 on the advice that Ragazzoni, who advised that the phosphate-rich clay could be sold to farmers as fertilizer. So he got this guy to buy the land so he could do more investigations. Many more discoveries followed from 1879 as Germani kept his word and informed the professor immediately upon finding more bones in the pit. So as they were going through the clay... They would find bones, jaw fragments, teeth, backbone, ribs, arms, legs, and feet were all dug out from the Pleistocene formation, which modern geologists have placed around three to four million years. And supposedly after that point, they were trying to argue the point of like, this was a washing or this, that, and the other. And then they dug into the mound that they know has the stating that they're not willing to go with, and there are more bones. Now this is just a picture, it's probably from Rome and one of the places they had of it, but all of them were completely covered with and penetrated by the clay and small fragments of coral and shells. They removed any suspicion that the bones were there of persons buried in the graves. 
in modern times and on the contrary confirmed the fact that they are transport by the waves of the sea, said Ragazzoni. And on February 16, 1880, Germani informed Ragazzoni that a complete skeleton had been found and discovered enveloped in a mass of blue-green clay, remains of which turned out to be that of an anatomically modern human female. Quote, the complete skeleton was found in the middle of a layer of blue clay. The stratum of blue clay, which is over one meter thick, represented its uniform stratification and does not show any sign of disturbance, wrote Ragazzoni, adding the skeleton was very likely deposited in a kind of marine mud and not buried at a later time. So here, we, here we can see an ancient burial. After personally examining the Castaneto skeletons at the Technical Institute of Brescia in 1883, Professor Giuseppe Sergei, an anonymous from the University of Rome, was convinced that they represented the remains of humans who had lived during the Pleistocene period of the tertiary. Hmm. Writing of his disdain towards the naysayers with the scientific community, Sergei commented that the tendency to reject by reason of theoretical preconceptions any discoveries that can demonstrate a human presence in the tertiary is, I believe, a kind of scientific prejudice. Natural science should be stripped of this prejudice. Well, indeed, that you know, we've come up with this idea of whenever this, whenever pottery started, but we found that, no, that kind of started a little before that. Well, uh, he, here's where the Calcolithic Age, the Copper Age is. Well, no, they're doing stuff that involves that much earlier, apparently. And then they couldn't have done stuff that you're still saying is in the Copper Age with just copper. And they want to give credit for that. But yet, just in the last year, we saw... 1800 years get added to possibly 1800 years get added to the iron age back in time and all of a sudden it starts crossing over well this is something much more archaic wide banded if you will in time and you're not trying to push back something a few hundred years and then having problems with it but thousands and thousands Indeed, it would be much easier if they found some interim deal where they found, okay, you know, we found 315,000. Well, now we find a 330. So again, if they found that one now, then boom. Well, here's a 340. Hey, here's one that looks like 400. Oh, and that 400 could go as much as 600, but we're going to call it 400 and leave that open and keep going. But no, it's not even there. In fact, most people haven't taken in the idea of the 330 Homo sapiens at this point. Anomalous skeletons have their place, too. Unfortunately, this prejudice, which continues to this day, shows no sign of abating, as Professor Sergi recognized back in the 19th century, by means of a despotic scientific prejudice, call it what you will, every discovery of human remains in the Pleistocene has been discredited. So why does its modern appearance override other factors? It doesn't seem to be a very scientific approach to disregard archaeological finds simply because... It does not conform to contemporary or evolutionary theses. The example cited in this article only a small selection of what has been rescued from obscurity by vigilant researchers, but how many more cases have suffered similar dismissal due to their anomalistic circumstances? There's a bunch of skulls, and that's probably from Rome, too. But I've done videos about a few of these. I don't open up the box here very often. I don't want to be discredited with like, oh, that dude just has all kinds of... No, it's not that I'm going out on that wholeheartedly. You can see what I go all out on when I do my studies and try to confine myself to things that I've done much more research on. But I do occasionally throw in like, what the hell is this? Well, this is one of those cases. But there's been other ones where the Galt site here, locally to me in Texas, shows up people at 18,000 years old. And that totally predates the idea of them coming across the land bridge at least. But then it also starts to overlap with the Salutrian people. The Salutrian people are from France. But they've found points over here. Even the slate has been verified to have come from there. But that, no, 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 shh, shh. We're supposed to have this special idea. Well, even Lincoln got to see the bones of a giant whenever he was in Niagara. He made a speech where he said, 
the eyes of those giants are just like our eyes now looking on Niagara today. That roam this land and blah, 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 or whatever. It's, uh, I paraphrase. If science continues to sweep unusual discoveries under the carpet, how are we supposed to progress as a species if we are intent on denying data which contradicts our rigid paradigms? It would appear that knowledge filter has been in place for some time now, too. Much of the detriment of humankind in our quest to illuminate our foggy, mysterious, ancient past. Well, I've made videos about that, too, where I've talked about how we had steam engine ideas and things going on back in the Greeks, and then there was this gap of 2,000 years, and all of a sudden, once we were able to put it back together and ignore and no longer have certain dichotomies over you, if you will, that, boom, we ended up planes, trains, and automobiles, and now spaceships. It's remarkable. I talk about what my granddad saw during his lifetime and the rapid change it was, which wasn't too much far from Roman. I ended up going there. Of course, we can't be sure of the valid validity of these anomalous finds mentioned above, but ignoring the sheer volume of cases which the question currently scientific paradigms regarding this evolution of man, we are being denied the whole story, which can only be detrimental to the ongoing study of human evolution. And this was written by uh, an author named Robinson uh, from the Myth of Man, J.P. Robinson. I'd like to check into that and see what he's got going on with it. So, when they find a Homo sapien type that comes without their number that they really wanted to hit, especially in ancient times when they were real caught up and just trying to hold on to the biblical thing and then went with the idea of evolution. And we all come from one concept. Whenever things in weird places were found like this, they're just balked on. Now that we know that there is 315 here, could it be 330 there? It easily could be, but that still doesn't fit their idea and they still want to balk on it for some reason. Grecopithecus verbergae is a... Lucy type candidate that's found up in Greek area, thus its name, Gregopithecus. And there's another one, a Ran Ranopithecus Macedon Macedoniensis. It's uh, another variation on a theme which a lot of people believe is almost, or if not exactly the same thing, also found up in the Macedonian area. Which then that kind of ruins their idea too of it possibly being from here. But no one's digging enough in the Americas to ever get to this point you're pretty much told to stop here. And if you dig a little deeper accidentally, like they did in Galt, you sometimes find some things that don't quite fit the paradigm. Anyhow, let me know what you think down there in the comments and see what you think. I mean, I've often think, well, radiocarbon dating's got to be off a little bit. Now they figured it is off a little bit and have gradient things for it some, but it's it was pretty damn accurate. Yeah, it was, it was real damn accurate. They have other dating methods now because it falters at 50,000 years or so, so they have other methods that they use for it, and they've been able to use those two and then still check radiocarbon and see it faltering off and understand its scale. Anyhow, like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy, and we'll get on to another one. And this is just one of a few that I'm going to take here out of the box here every once in a while and bring out along with... Uh, UFO connections and things like that, but I, I sure don't want to be acting like I'm just touting that as that that's the thing I'm standing upon. I'm not. I'm just saying, look, what's, what the hell is this over here? Peace.